Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. When I moved into the house, there was a few bits left over in the garage. Amongst them was this old joiner's wooden toolbox. Back in the summer when I was building that log store, I was speaking to the neighbour and he said that a carpenter used to live in the house. Unfortunately all the tools were gone, apart from a couple of old hammer heads that I will do something with one day. But first I thought I'd see if I could make this box useful again. It was a bit dirty, so I gave it a clean with the air duster. It looks like it's made from pine with some ply on the front and back, which has started to delaminate at the edges. So the first job is to try and fix that. I get the gap opened up with a screwdriver and then get some glue squeezed in and spread out. When I've got the glue in all the holes, I can get plenty of clamps on to pull it all tight. It's got an old dirty bit of webbing on it that's used as a handle and it's attached with some bolts that are needlessly long so I'm going to get it taken off. To keep the chest closed it's got a little latch. It's got a bit rusty but it works fine so I'm going to get it taken off and see if I can get it cleaned up. I stick all the bits in a little plastic tub, get them covered in evapor rust, put the lid on and then leave it to soak overnight. All the loose bits of ply are glued back on, but there's a few bits missing that I think might cause it to split in the future, so I'm just going to get them covered up with some filler. This is some two-part filler, which dries incredibly hard, so I just get some of that mixed up and then spread into all the cracks. The chest is really just an empty box with no storage in it whatsoever and I want to add a drawer. I've got this thin bit of oak that came off a pallet and I'm going to rip that down to fit in. This is going to be the bottom of the drawer so I can use it as a template to cut all the other bits down. I found this bit of oak that's going to be the right size for the height of the drawers without having to rip it down. So I get the bits cut for the front, back and the sides. I thought about joining this together with my box joint jig but as it's going to be so small and get such light use, I'm just going to glue and nail it together. I just get some PVA spread on and then get some nails shot through, through the bottom and then get the sides nailed together as well. Now that's the drawer or the tray done. So now I can get it put in the box to work out where the runners need to go. I've cut down a couple of little scraps to use as the runners. I get them put in place and then I mark on the outside of the box roughly the centre point of where they are. I can then get some glue spread on these runners and put them in place. I want the drawer to be a few mil down from the top so it runs freely so I use a few playing cards as spacers when I'm getting these in. When they're in position I can then get the nail gun and fire some nails through that line I've drawn to hold them in place. That's one bit of storage done, but I'd also like to be able to hold my Japanese saws in this. I position them on the inside of the wood, then I cut down some more scraps of oak for them to sit on. I'm putting them on the oak because the back of this lid is made of very thin ply, so I've got nothing to screw onto. When I'm happy with the position of them, I can get some glue on them. To attach the saws, I'm going to use a combination of the magnets left over from when I made the kitchen knife rack and some leather straps. With these bits glued in place, I can then fire some nails through from the other side to secure them. Now with all those bits of wood I want to add to this box in place, I can give all that filler a sand back. It's looking pretty awful and patchy with all that filler, so I want to give it a coat of paint. So to make that a little easier, I'm going to take the door off. I had a little look at what paint I had on hand, and I decided to go with a matte black chalkboard paint. 
I think that's going to look pretty cool and if I ever get bored I can just get the chalks out and draw on it. As the drawers made out of oak it seemed a shame to paint it and I thought having the contrast might be nice so I'm just giving it a coat of Danish oil. While I've got the lid off it's probably easier to get the saws fitted now. I position them where I want them to go and then I've got the left over magnets. They came with these sticky back tabs and I'm going to use them to attach them. I just get a couple of magnets lined up on each of the blocks of wood that are under the blades. These are extremely strong and these saws aren't going anywhere. But just to be extra safe I want to secure the handles. So I've got this scrap of leather that I'm just going to cut down so it can go over both of the handles. I mark out where I want the screws to go through it and then I can punch some 3 mil holes in the leather. I can then get the leather screwed down onto those little oak strips using some brass screws and some screw caps that are going to act as washers. With the saw secure I can then get the lid attached back to the main body of the box. Now that this latch has had a day in the evaporust I can get it out and give it a clean up. It's done a pretty good job. It's definitely usable and isn't going to need replacing. So I can get it put back on using the existing holes and the same screws. Now I want to add a bit of personalisation to this so I'm going to heat up my branding iron. As I've painted the box I can't just brand the wood so I'm going to brand a little scrap of leather. I had a few goes to get the temperature right and an even impression and then I can get the logo cut out. I get the logo positioned centrally at the top of the box and then I draw around it. This is because I want to use some contact adhesive and you need to put it on both surfaces. So first I get it spread out on the back of that little bit of leather. Then I get some put on the box in those pencil lines I've drawn and then both pieces need to be left 10 minutes before putting together. They bond instantly so you've got to make sure you get everything lined up so those pencil marks also helped with doing that. As I've added a couple of leather details already I can continue with that theme. So I'm punching a hole in this little scrap I've got then I can fold it over, put the punch through the existing hole and punch another one. This is then going to get screwed on the front of the drawer as a little pull. The case needs a handle so I'm going to set my strap cutter to the thickness of this punch. I can then use it to cut a strap of leather. This is called a church end punch and I use that to cut a profile at either end of the strap. Then I can punch a 3mm hole on either end. The strap can now be installed just above the logo with the same brass screws and screw caps acting as washers. And that's it all done. Now I can just get a few tools in and get it filled up. The drawer or the tray just slides into the top of the box and can be easily removed to find the bits you want. The saws are already in place, it is secure with those magnets and leather straps. Not quite sure what else I want to keep in here at the moment but I'm just going to put a small parts case and a hammer in just to see how things fit. So I've finally got somewhere to keep my saws and now if I ever need to go anywhere I've got a mobile toolkit I can take with me. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreons, and please subscribe for more videos.